Hello and welcome. In a previous video, where I have created an iPod, many of you pointed out the lack of USB-C and Bluetooth connectivity. And I completely agree. For many, the retro aesthetic of an iPod is unresistible. Yet, you're still bound to using audio cables with it. If you have wireless or noise cancelling headphones, or perhaps wireless speakers, your Bluetooth-enabled phone is often more convenient. Moreover, in 2023, the USB-C standard is much more prevalent than the older USB-A. So you would definitely want to charge and sync an iPod with a USB-C cable instead of the outdated 30-pin connector. So I have decided to do exactly that, to upgrade my iPod with both USB-C and Bluetooth capabilities in this video. All right, so before we go to the matter at hand, the actual upgrade kit, I want to tell you a little bit about the iPod that we are going to upgrade. That's the iPod 6th generation for 30 bucks. It has 120 gigabytes, uh, but the hard drive is busted, and it will be a shame if it's going to stay like this. For this, I have these two Lexar mini SD cards with combined storage of 128 gigabytes so we can do a similar upgrade to the iPod you probably remember from my earlier video. Now it's time to look at the upgrade kit that we got. Its name, the name of the company is Moonlit Market and the name of the actual Connect kit is Classic Connect and it's a solderless Bluetooth kit with USB-C so you don't need to solder anything. Inside it, it has some nice stickers, a booklet, well, not a booklet, but a paper with instruction on how to use a Bluetooth mode once your kit is installed. The normal kit comes with one battery, but I ordered two extra batteries, uh, both for 2000 milliamperes, so I can also upgrade my previous black backplate iPod with higher capacity. Next, it has an SD adapter, which is much smaller than the iFlash one, for two mini SD cards. And finally, it has the backplate, which is a 3D printed backplate with a custom made PCB board, specifically by uh, Moonlit Market for uh, upgrading your iPod. Apart from the normal familiar ribbon cables, like the audio cable on the left, and the battery cable uh, on the right, we have an additional one in the middle for the battery that will be also charged through this USB-C port. So if we look at the top of the kit and going left to right, we will have the Bluetooth button, then the normal lock switch, finally the USB-C uh, port next and 3.5 millimeter for the headphones. Moonlit Market provides instructions on how you can solder the PCB so that you can also sync your iPod through USB-C cable. But I'm not familiar with soldering, so I will not do it for this upgrade. But you can if you're interested. Now finally, it has its familiar 30-pin port. So you can still do whatever you want with a normal 30-pin cable uh, and at the same time use Bluetooth, charge it with USB-C, um, and do whatever you are used to, so you don't lose on functionality or connectivity when installing this kit. The backplate itself is matte with nice logo at the back and the name of Moonlit Market. In terms of size, it's almost as thick as the normal iPod, maybe a tiny bit thicker than the thin model of the iPod Classic, um, so you won't have any problems if you have a dock or something to plug it into, it would fit, so don't worry about that. So now let's proceed to upgrade it. As part of the upgrade, I decided that I'm going to take the nice uh, front plate from the previously upgraded iPod because it has no scratches here. And I will put that front plate on the Bluetooth iPod. So on the busted uh, iPod so that my Bluetooth iPod would be the best looking one. And besides that, I still wanted to upgrade both iPods with a uh, high capacity battery so I can combine two projects into one. 
So first of course I had to open the old iPod and take out the old busted hard drive. After that I opened my black backplate iPod and successfully transferred the mini SD adapter to the scratched front plate from the 30 buck iPod. After that I replaced the small original battery with a bigger 2000 mAh one, put all the ribbons together, made sure that it could be found and restored by the iTunes and finally assembled the finished iPod together. Now for our Bluetooth iPod. Moonlit Market provides a detailed walkthrough of the installation on their website so I'm just going to comment on the important details that I find relevant for you to know. The first thing that you need to do is to take the pliers and remove the top pin from your front plate of the iPod. This step is non-reversible. Once you take out the pin, it will be off. So just keep it in mind when if, if you want to upgrade it because this is one of the things that Moonlit Market Kit does that you can't walk back from. So you will not be able to use this same front plate in any other iPod modifications you would want to. So just keep that in mind. After that, you need to, well, plug the ribbon cables in from the uh, from the back plate to the front plate and to the motherboard of the iPod. And next to that, you need to take out the battery, take out the paper from the side of the battery, and then you need to fold the ribbon cable in a very specific way, as shown in detail on the instructional video. Now, I wish that wasn't the case. I wish either the battery was already uh, pre-made in such a way that you can plug it in, or the connection on the back plate was made in such a way that you could easily plug in the battery without folding the cable in a specific way or taking off the paper. Although you replace the paper later on with any masking paper and I think it's safe, I do feel that it's somewhat of a hack and I wonder if it compromises the long-term life of that battery. Once you plug the battery in, you can check if the Bluetooth works by just pressing it in and it should start searching and pairing for a device. So you can finally be happy that the functionality of Bluetooth actually works and the battery is functional. After that, what you need to do is plug the storage module in. And in my case, I would plug this double SD uh, adapter storage with the Lexer SD card that I showed you earlier. Then I will make sure that everything works together by plugging in the rest of the ribbon cables and checking that the, uh, the iTunes can restore the iPod fully. And after that comes the important point where you need to make sure that everything works before you apply the glue. Because the way how the plastic backplate will fit on the front plate of your iPod is with the glue. So before doing that, before applying the glue, you need to make sure that your audio jack works, that the lock works, that the battery charges, that the 30 pin connector syncs, Bluetooth works, and finally the USB-C charging works. And it doesn't display the charging animation or the charging icon, but you will see in a moment that the battery will become full. Here it is. If you didn't see it, I'll try to replicate it once more. And now. Yep. So that's how you know that the USB-C works. Now we need to see if Bluetooth will work. So I got my Sony noise cancelling headphones and I put them in the pairing mode and then I put my iPod with the kit in the pairing mode as well. So long press and then it will blink and it will pair with whatever other Bluetooth device is in pairing mode. And when they're disconnected, it will automatically try to connect to the last device it paired with. So after that you just need to play some music and make sure that it is, it is audible on your device. In my case it was audible. I couldn't record a very nice audio from my headphones so I didn't include it in the video. Uh, but if you buy this kit and you want to verify it, please make sure that Bluetooth works before you put the glue in. Now the last part is the gluing part. And the instructions from the Moonlit Market, the instructional video, doesn't really show you how to apply the glue. Um, they show you the area in which the glue is supposedly should go, but there is no hands-on 
manual to do that. So I really struggled with this. I tried to deduce how it's supposed to uh, to be applied and I tried to apply it on both sides as suggested in the instructional video. Uh, but still I struggled because I don't know whether it was the correct way how it's supposed to be applied or not. So after you apply the glue, you plug in the battery ribbon cable back into the motherboard of the iPod and then you need to uh, assemble it. And you assemble it by first putting in the top part of the faceplate into the backplate. Then you're supposed to bend the backplate um, so that the lower part doesn't chip it, doesn't chip the plastic. Um, I didn't manage to do that, so I couldn't really bend it that well. So in the end, I might have accidentally forced it in. And after that, I realized that the bottom doesn't really hold in uh, very well. So I don't know what I did wrong. Um, perhaps I didn't bend it well enough but uh, alas, it didn't really bend um, at all, or there is really minimal flex there. So in the end, I assembled it, and then I just hoped that once the glue would settle in, and Moonlit Marker recommends 24 hours, uh, and you need to put something heavy on top of it. So I just hoped that after this 24 hours, it would hold in uh, together nicely. So after 24 hours, we are ready to see whether the glue has set in and how our iPod looks like. Apart from some residual glue, uh, everything worked out pretty good. So 30 pin connector is exactly where it needs to be. The other sides of the iPod are very nicely flushed. So everything is in line with the backplate. And after cleaning the residue uh, of the glue, it looks very nice. So it actually looks uh, quite, not that like new, but it looks uh, fairly good. Um, especially the plastic backplate gives you a lighter iPod in hands because, well, it's not metal. Um, there is some leftovers of either the glue or the fact that I rubbed it a little bit too hard with my microfiber cloth when I was uh, cleaning it up. Um, but in general, I like the backplate. It's simple. Uh, it looks nice. I hope it's also sturdy. I haven't dropped it yet and I hopefully uh, will never drop it. And it's a nice change from the full metal backplate, um, at least for the, uh, for the weight factor of the iPod. So now that we have determined that it looks fine and the installation was successful, let's see how it plays and I will tell you my conclusion. First, I like how more usable my iPod had become with addition of Bluetooth. This kit has Bluetooth 5.2 and aptX support, so sound-wise I didn't see any difference from my iPhone. Now, next to my speakers, I can use all my extra wireless devices, which are my Sony noise cancelling headphones, as well as my sports headphones open shocks that I use for running. In the living room, I do have a record player. So I like to rip my vinyl records through it via USB. And now it's nice that I can put those ripped records onto my iPod, connect the iPod with Bluetooth to my wireless speakers in the living room, and for example, use it as a jukebox during parties where my guests can just select the music they want to play instead of getting out the vinyl record, putting it on the platter, um, and then rotating in 20 minutes. In terms of signal strength, the Bluetooth is amazing, so I can easily move throughout the house, go to the another floor, uh, forget it in weird places, and uh, the signal will still go through the speakers or to the headphones, so no complaints on that front. This backplate doesn't have um, a clicking sound like the normal iPod has, so the only clicks uh, you would hear would go through either headphones or through the wirelessly connected speakers. Uh, but I don't mind this. In general, it's just like a normal iPod, just with extra features, uh, a little bit lighter because of the plastic backplate. I also like the 
a lock switch that is a little bit more conveniently located there. The case is very nice and grippy to hold. It also is not slippy like the metal uh, backplate, so I'm less afraid of accidentally dropping it. I wish I could have fitted the iPod a little better in the backplate, but still it holds very well. I have no complaints about the quality of the glue or the construction so far. The USB-C is a great addition. It can charge your iPod with 2000 mAh battery in 50 minutes fully, which is great. So if you don't want to sync any music, just want to charge it, go ahead and use USB-C with it. So what can I say in conclusion? Am I happy with it? Yes, I am. I think Classic Connect Kit by Moonlit Market is a great thing if you want to add Bluetooth to your iPod, if you want to have a convenience of USB-C charging, and if you also want to sync your iPod via USB-C, there are instructions how to solder the connections to your motherboard. My only slight complaints and perhaps points of improvement would be to address the battery and the installation of the battery procedure and maybe think about the backplate, how it can fit the battery a bit better, maybe the design should be a bit different, and perhaps uh, the way how the front plate fits into the backplate can be changed slightly so that um, the application of glue would be more straightforward and overall assembly uh, would be easier. It's a niche product, a little amount of people would want to pay this amount of money just to have a do-it-yourself kit to make a Bluetooth enabled iPod. However, if you're an iPod enthusiast and you really wanted to have a Bluetooth iPod and you don't want to bother yourself with soldering, that's a great product that I can definitely recommend. And by the way, I was not paid by Moonlit Market. I just bought it for myself and I decided to make um, a re review about it. So I hope you enjoyed it and I wish you a very nice new year and I see you in the next video. Thank you.